on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Live Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones. It's the time of the season. Empires have always had a problem. After big wars, what do they do with all the veterans? It's generally veterans at the end of World War I, World War II, you name it, that stir up trouble. It was the veterans that mainly pushed for the civil rights reforms at the end of World War II. We're supposed to be the good guys. What's going on here? And I'm oversimplifying it, but, but there is social engineering going on. Sergeant Biggs, uh, who does reporting for us uh, time to time, is going to be a full-time reporter with us soon. Uh, he was in um, four tours of combat duty. I've been surfing with him and seen him with his shirt off, bullet holes uh, all over him, uh, shrapnel wounds all over his head. Um, of course, he's the guy that exposed the fact that they probably whacked Hastings uh, there with the Rolling Stones magazine. But he said that they were giving them on their duty in Afghanistan opiates and ordering them to take them. They'd have the Russians come in with the helicopters and just deliver just, just tons of it to the troops as a way to, to addict them, a way to control them. And I talked to other troops, you know, they give them speed, they give them all sorts of amnesics, they give special forces amnesics uh, in these tests. You can read about that in the Marshall Plan. That was the name of the article in Wired Magazine about the Army Futurist. Now, I'm throwing this out at uh, psychiatrist, uh, MD, Dr. Uh, John Liebert, uh, who served and headed up uh, 
the major Seattle VAs and other facilities and written the book Wounded Minds. And I totally agree with him on the points he's raising so far. As for universal service, it's kind of like the death penalty. Uh, you know, I, I'm for the death penalty, but I don't trust our government to implement it. And it's the same thing with universal service. I mean, I don't want my kids in all these big giant wars uh, endlessly. And of course, I see how they treat troops no matter what, like garbage. I remember asking my dad when I was a kid, why they have atomic soldiers? Aren't monkeys cheaper? He said, no, son. Uh, when I was working at MD Anderson, I asked him that same question. And they said, animals are cheaper than humans. And so there is this attitude by the technocracy and people like, you know, John, I think he's probably a good guy. So people that are nice and have good intentions, they compartmentalize. I'm not saying he's naive. He's been do it, dealing with this for 40 years or more. Uh, you know, I, I think there is a predatory attitude, period, against veterans. So I don't, I don't know about universal service. Comment on that, and then you can hear my more, what you might call paranoid rants. Uh, you know, about, I'm sure you heard the fluoride ad, you know, uh, doctor, about, about fluoride as a social tool. I have eco-science written by the current White House science czar, where they talk about social engineering us, uh, with sterilants in the water and behavioral modifiers that are now proposing lithium in the water in Japan because of increased suicide over there instead of addressing the cultural situation. I know that's a long gestalt introducing you, but what do you say to all that? I believe that, um, uh, and in my book I make a, a very strong point of this, uh, that, uh, in, that everybody who... Uh, uh, graduates from high school, um, goes into the, the military, or goes to jail. And um, everybody uh, goes into the military with a high school degree or goes to jail. Um, and in, there are no deferments other than conscientious objectors, but they don't get off the hook because um, they have to do something else. They have to be firemen, uh, for two years, or go with the Peace Corps, or do do something else. But there are no there are no deferments except for you know very extreme issues such as severe extreme juvenile delinquency um, or a severe medical disability. Uh, this is nothing new. This is what Eisenhower said in 1966 when he was complaining about how unfair the draft is. Uh, the all-volunteer army is also discriminatory, too, in a different way, um, because it selects from um, more rural areas where kids are dead-ended and uh, offers them an opportunity to, you know, get out of Dodge and, and, and get, get a life. Yeah, it's targeting poor people. It is, but it's a different class of poor people than, than the Vietnam draft, um, you know, which was mostly inner city kids. These are a lot of these kids are, you know, young people are from, you know, well, some of them aren't even Americans. Um, I saw, I saw Jamaicans, and you know, they're this this individual was from Puerto Rico. And of course, that's a national U.S. territory. But um, now, some of the biggest recruiting centers are like Mexico City now. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. But in any case, in answer to your question, you know, what would be the ramifications of that? Um, I think if, if we had um, uh, uni universal military service and everybody was in, uh, there would be more transparency. Uh, we wouldn't have the kinds of, you know, managed news and, you know, kind of uh, sequest uh, official sequestration of the facts in this matter that, oh, this was just a little incident between a guy and the guy went off um you know we're not, i mean who's going to believe that i hope not too many people uh but in any case um you know i i think that that you know if everybody's in we're going to have less of this kind of thing and you know it's not going to be that easy you know to ship five hundred thousand people off to you know to asia uh, no, I agree with you that the fact that it's all volunteer allows them to abuse these people, and then nobody has skin in the game, so right. it, it actually contributes to more wars because right. we just ship off all the rural conservative kids to die. It's the foreign, it's, you know, we got, we, got our, we, got our, we got a foreign legion here. You're right. What percentage of it is, uh, is not even U.S. citizens? Well, I, I saw uh, a number I of up. a high percentage, but they're, they're there. I saw them. And uh, they're there.
And uh, these are these are, are mercenaries. It's not in a large percentage, but uh, you know we do have like the makings of a foreign legion. And I just happen to be in. I, I happen to have arrived in France when De Gaulle signed that Algerian uh, peace treaty, and there were gendarmes on every corner waiting for the foreign legion to come in and, and do a parachute drop on Paris and take it over. They were so they were so betrayed. Well, weren't, yeah, weren't they involved hiring the jackal to try to kill De Gaulle? I don't. I wouldn't doubt it. But I tell you that it was. I had no idea what was going on. I was just a tourist, and I arrived there, and I, I was I was just kind of dumbfounded at what was going on. But they were up, they were really afraid that their own army was going to come at them. Well, that's because they had they had with. The, have you seen the movie The Jackal? It's it's an accurate history of what happened. They have the. Um, you know, the one attempt by the French Foreign Legion to kill De Gaulle, and then they send in the jackal, but he gets killed. That's actually a that's actually a true story. Pretty amazing, uh, the types of things that go on there. Again, governments fearing veterans. Uh, look at the, the French and Indian War. That's who the, the 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 British regular started a fight with the veterans back in 1775. Have you seen this demonization in the news by Homeland Security saying veterans are the number one threat uh, for terrorism? Have you seen that? I have I have not seen that. Um, we we do know that that uh, gangs have either been created in the military or have in, infiltrated the military to get military training, and there have been some of them picked up. And you know that's that's an internal threat. Um, well, doctor, I'm not asking you to attack your profession, but and obviously I know some people who've taken psychotropics and it's helped them, but also know in, in so many cases. I know people that's ruined their lives, and the insert says can make you kill people, can make you, you know, I mean, you know better than I what's in the inserts of these things. Uh, I mean, drugs obviously have got to be central to this. I get they're already screwed up, but you give somebody these drugs that put them in a dreamlike state or, 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 or sleeping pills that are really, uh, I guess, hypnotics like the Ambien. We keep seeing it pop up as well. I mean, are, are the, are, do the drugs concern you? The drugs concern me in that um, we know uh, that uh, psychotrop psychotropic drugs um, are inadequately um, prescribed by most practitioners um, and or a significant number of practitioners, uh, including psychiatrists. So when they talk about this guy getting prescriptions, having worked in the military, you don't know how this guy got prescriptions. They do have little baggies. The medics have little baggies, um, you know, in the combat zones. And, and it, it includes, you know, Ambien, and it includes medications to help, you know, people sleep, et cetera. Um, and, yes, this is a problem. I don't think that, that the psychotropic medications are prescribed as well as they should be because, you know, the the military does not have. I mean, it, it, there's a there's a portrait here that you know there are all these military psychiatrists at Fort Hood and Fort Bliss who were doing it. I worked in I worked in an outpatient clinic um, at one of the largest military facilities in in the world in 2008. There wasn't one military psychiatrist in that clinic. Um, they were on the they were on the grounds, but they they weren't in the clinic. It's I was about to say in the fifties and sixties, I was reading the ratios. There was a lot more of them. It seems like now the military, particularly, just wants to ignore that all this is going on. Well, sure they do because you know they they don't have the they don't have the personnel to deal with it. Um, now I, I guarantee you that all of us in psychiatry are going to start getting. Emails, um, you know, to 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 go to Fort Hood, uh, you know, the pay is pretty good, you know, and be a psychiatrist there on a temporary basis and all that kind of thing, you know, and um, you know, a lot of these facilities, you know, the what's called the quotes, the behavioral health clinics quotes, um, you know, the, the, if if there's a psychiatrist there. Um, you know, it's it's probably you know kind of unique. These are you know like physicians' assistants, uh, nurse practitioners. Sure, sure, and they're the ones handing out the pills. I don't know what they're doing, doctor. A lot of them, you know, I we don't know. We do, we.
we don't know if this guy ever saw a psychiatrist. Well, they also said he...